G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again with another C Sharp tutorial. This time we're having a look at arrays, what they are, how you create them, and some real world examples for you, so you can sort of get it into your head. At some point I want to do an illustration at the end of this video as well, just to give you sort of a graphic of how arrays are created and how they look to the computer. So, as always, I like to jump straight into the code, so let's do that. In the past, if I wanted to store a data value, okay, let's say it's a number, and I want to make it an integer, obviously, then I would go int num equals, and then I put a value such as seven inside of it. Now, if I wanted to create multiple variables with the same data type with a similar name, then I might do something like int num two, int num three, and int num four, let's just put one more value in there, int num five, and so forth. Now, that does get a little bit cumbersome after a little while, five is not too bad, for me to type, but if you want to then make, let's say, a hundred of these things, it becomes a little bit infeasible for you to be able to create a hundred variables manually. But to move along from this example, let's bring in arrays. Now an array is exactly what I've done here, basically. So if I want to make five variables, all the same data type with a very similar name, but they have to have different values, then we use an array. So if you ever have multiple variables, and you're about to use them for a very similar purpose, create yourself an array, because an array can be any data type. It can be integers, strings, booleans, floats, whatever. It can be a lot more complicated than that, but they're the basics. So to actually write something like this, I would write int just like before, but I would then add square braces after the variable data type, then put a name, and I like to use names which are similar to this kind of approach, but with a plural on the end to indicate that there's going to be more than one. Now, I've created an array of integer, integers, sorry, called nums. How do I specify how many of those do I want? Well, you do an equals and then put new int and square braces again, but this time in the square braces, put how many integers you want. So if I want five integers, put the number five, all right? So this one line of code has actually done the exact same thing as this five lines here. The only thing we haven't done is put the values inside the array, okay? And the way to pretend is when I make an array, I've actually made five different variables. So that means I can have five different values inside the array. Now I'm actually going to scrap those lines in a sec, but before we do, how do we specify the first value seven? So what we do, we can't do nums equals seven, because what you're effectively saying there to C sharp is that all five numbers are going to be the value of seven. That doesn't make sense, okay? What we'd have to do is specify that the very first value in my array will be seven. And the way we do that is again, square brackets, and we use the position number known as the index. Okay, and that position number for the first one is zero. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I'm basically saying my array first position is seven. And then if I wanna do the second position, I just increase that position value to one or index, I'm now gonna call it. And then we keep going like this. Whoa, I already got carried away. 43, nums four equals minus two. Okay, and I can now delete these five lines because I've got the exact same code underneath. So it takes one line to declare the five numbers and then obviously because I had five values, I still have to do this. And this is a very simple introduction to arrays. Now if I wanna actually print them to the screen, because right now if I run my code, nothing's gonna happen. So I wanna put something on the screen. If I just print my array to the screen and press play, this is what comes up. System int 32 with square brackets after it. Now, unfortunately, this is exactly how C Sharp should behave because what I've told it to do is print the array to the screen. Well, what the, is the array? Well, the array is in a collection of numbers. And that's what C Sharp has told me, that you've just printed a collection of numbers. How do I specify each individual number? Well, then I have to do this again. I have to say which position I want to print to the screen. So if you want to print the first number, you have to put the first number, okay? And again, if I want to print all five numbers, like I've got here, you're going to need five lines of code. That might sound a bit tedious, but it's actually going to get a bit simpler in just a moment. I'm just going to click play and see that, yep, there's my five numbers. Pause the video if you want to play around with this, and I'd also suggest maybe try different data types, okay? Try using strings, booleans, or floats, 
because what I want to do now is show you how do we make this a bit simpler. How do we print those five values to the screen? Okay, or even a hundred values to the screen in a simpler way. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. So for an example, I'm printing five numbers to the screen. I want to use a for loop to go through my five values for me. And I can extend this to obviously include more than five values, but start simple. In the loops video, I showed you that I used a counter that started at zero, okay, and then it went all the way up to five, or I think it went to 10 in my loops, but we're gonna stop at five, and we increase by one each time. Okay, let's take this one line of code and put it in my code block here. Look, there we go. I'm also going to delete these five, four guys, sorry. And what I've got here, I'm actually looping five times and I'm printing the numbers to the screen with one little issue. I'm currently only printing the first value to the screen. Now with those five, five lines I had before, you can see the only thing that changed was that number, the position, the index. <laughs> I promised I wouldn't call it the position. Okay, so how do we change that now? We'll just put count, because count starts at zero. And with a for loop, it increases to one, then to two, then to three, then to four, and it will stop at that point. So if I run this code now, it's gonna print out all five values. And if I have 500 values, I only need to change one single number, and that code is gonna print out every single number. Now, I want you to be quite careful when you do this. Now, let's say I haven't got five, of. right now I'm trying to print six values out of the array. If I don't have six values and I run this code, you're going to get an error, which says index was outside the bounds of the array. So there's the error, nice and big. Where did you go, mate? Okay, what this is basically saying is you're using an index which doesn't exist. Okay, I'm trying to access position 5, which doesn't exist. It only goes from 0 to 4. Okay, so that's just one thing to be wary. Now, this is just the basics of an array. I wanna go into some examples now, so let's do that. I'm gonna comment out all this code that I had here, and then I'm going to add some more down the bottom. So, the first example is, what if I wanna store all the names for the months, okay? And then let the user print one to the screen. So, for an example, I'm gonna create an array of strings because I'm using words, and I need to put my square braces. I'm gonna call it months, use a plural, and how many months are there? Well, they're 12, so I'm going to go new string 12 with a semicolon on the end. Now, the way to fill it up with 12 strings, again, is by using those positions. And I'm going to be really quick and cheap about this. So the first month is going to be January. And then the second month is Feb. Make sure you update your position as you go along, by the way, if you're going to do this. Feb, March, and so forth. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to stop the video for a second, fill this up. Just come back when I'm done, so you don't have to stare at me filling all these up. Okay, so we're back, and I've got the month set up here in my array. So you can see I've got 12 strings, and I've made sure all the positions go from 0 to 11, and all the months hopefully are spelt correctly, and we're good to go. Now, one thing I could do, I could easily set up that loop again that I had before for the numbers. So this one here, if I want to print out all the months to the screen, so I'll just copy that. Okay, paste it here, uncomment, change that to 12, change that to months, and that's just going to go through and print out each month on the screen, which is not that interesting. So let's try something a little bit more interesting. Let's ask the user, so console write, which month number, whoop, do you like? Now, I know that sounds very, very strange, but let's ask them to enter 0 to 11. Okay. Generally, you wouldn't obviously do this. Month number equals int.pass, console.readline. No, not read key, read line. Okay. And then once we've got a number from the user, we could easily print months and then in the braces, Instead of putting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 11, you can use the number that the user has typed in. So things get a little bit more complicated. Okay, so if I type in 8, I can get something like this. 
Okay, so the reason I use an example such as this one here is just because I like to show off, you know, other ways that you can access elements inside an array rather than just typing in the number or using a counter in a for loop. You can actually use any integer to access certain spots in the array. So one last example, I don't want to do this again because this is quite tedious, really. Okay, I want to ask the user to enter in all the values that they want to use. So once again, I'm going to comment this stuff out, like I always do. We're going to come down a little bit, and we're going to ask the user to enter in, let's say, seven temperatures. Let's say we want the temperatures from Monday to Sunday for a particular week. Okay, so first of all, I want to use fractional values for this one. So I'm going to go float, say it's an array, call it temps, just to keep it nice and short. And I want to use seven floats. Okay. And once again, I don't want to have to enter in every single index of every single variable. So, I mean, if I was to do it the long way, it would start looking like dot read line. And I forgot to do float dot pass at the front of it. So if I want just a single temperature, this is what the line of code would look like. Now, if I bring back well, actually, before I do that, I need to say, you know, enter a temperature. Okay, just like that. So if I want to bring back that for loop that we had originally, okay, I can sort of flip it. So the other for loop I use to print all the values to the screen. What if I actually use a for loop to gather all the values from the user? Okay, once again, I'll bring in count, make it equal zero, because that's where we start. And we want to finish at seven, count plus plus. And I'll put these lines inside my code block. And then the only thing I need to change, thankfully, is the position from zero to count. Okay, so that's going to loop through and that's going to collect seven temperatures from the user. But it's also probably a nice idea to put them back on the screen. So I'm going to copy this loop and paste it. But what I'm going to do is drop, obviously, the read line. Changes to a right line and just um, modify it slightly. Do do do. Temperature. And then I can go count. And then we can just put what do I call it? Temps. Count. Just like we've done for any other variable. So I'm printing temperature, then the number or the index of that temperature, and then the value of the temperature that they entered. So I'm basically just collecting it and then spitting it back out on the screen. So if I quickly start this up, we'll give it a quick go. And this is pretty much going to bring us to the illustration at the end. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's been a cold winter. And you can see temperature zero is eight, six, five, the exact order that I typed it in. So they're pretty much the real world examples that you would use. Now, if you're using a console application, these would definitely be the way that you set up an array and fill it up with values. Now, obviously, in more complicated programs, you're going to fill up arrays with different means. It might come from a database, a text file. It might even come from the internet, depending. But I want to leave this video here and then pick it up again in part two with some more real-world examples and different things you can do with arrays just to make things a bit more complicated. But let's finish on the illustration of what an array actually looks like and how it behaves. Okay, so for this particular example, I'm going to sort of rewind a little bit and have a look at the original example I gave in programming. When I create a variable, I'm essentially creating a box in memory, just like I talked about in the original variables video. So if I put a number inside a variable, what I'm effectively doing is storing a number inside of that box. And then when I create another variable, I'm creating another box and I'm putting a different value inside that one and so forth and so forth. Now, the biggest issue is this actually creates random parts of RAM that you've stored your values in. Now, it's not essentially random. It's just not going to be cohesive. So what I mean by that is these variables might exist in a chunk of RAM. So I'm just going to illustrate a big, long chunk of RAM. And you can imagine that a little variable probably takes up a spot about that big. Now, when I create two variables, I, they might be created quick enough that they sit next to each other. That might be the case. But if I create multiple variables throughout my program at slightly different times, the computer is going to put it in the best spot that it can find at that time. 
So it's not necessarily going to put the variables together. And what this means is that the access time for your variables actually decreases. The other disadvantage of using variables over an array, for example, would be the fact that you can't use an index. You can't use the for loops that I set up and you can't use that index to specify the individual values and each variable has its own name and it comes a bit clunky. So when I create a variable such as the one we created called nums, what I've effectively done is I've said to C Sharp, I want a big chunk of memory all together if you can help it and I want five spots in RAM where I can store values. Okay, and when I store each value, it sort of looks like this here. Now, I know these weren't the numbers that I was using, but they're close enough. And when I accessed each one, I used that index or the position to get each element. And essentially, I like to just number the boxes at the top. And that gives you a bit of an indicator of how the indexes work. So when I say I want to put something in nums4, I'm saying I'm putting it in this position right here. Okay. So that's effectively what an array looks like and sort of how it behaves in the computer system. So when you allocate your RAM, you're getting a big chunk rather than little chunks everywhere around the place, okay? It keeps things a little bit neater in RAM, but it also keeps your code looking a lot neater too. But guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope this all made sense. In the next video, I wanna cover a little bit more about arrays like I said before. But for right now, I want you to think about like, subscribing and commenting and I'll catch you in the next video. Ta-ta.